Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we're going to continue our motor series with a little bit more exploration, this time in hardware instead of software. Well, I told you that this project is going many, many, many different places, and one of the things that we need to talk about is you know, what kind of motors would be accessible to everyone, what could make this project have some mainstream adoption. And today we're going to push those limits a little bit with a very, very, very cheap motor. I mean, this is easy to start with, it is cheap to start with, why not start here for our proof of concept? And specifically, I'm playing with how low can we go when it comes to an encoder. I have a couple different motors on order, some of them have integrated encoders, some of them, like this one, will require an external encoder, but we're going to play around with what is possible. Push the lower edge of the price spectrum first. And you could say I'm just being cheap, but you know, whatever. So as we're exploring this, I have two main test subjects. We have two encoder wheels. The one on the left requires a slower response time because that window is larger. So this may allow for higher speed detection. Whereas this one requires a faster response time, but it has a higher resolution, right? This will give us 10 pulses per rotation of the motor, where this will give six. And we're going to start just by controlling this with some lab power supplies, spin this motor to different speeds, and try to capture the pulses on our oscilloscope. That's what we're doing today, and if it goes really well and or we get it done really fast, we might end up writing some software to do some closed loop speed control um, otherwise, that'll be in our next video. Uh, we'll see how it shakes out, how long this takes. Either way, uh, let's dive in. I said, as I spin the wheel, we can see that changing. There we go. That's awesome. Just zoom in a touch. Very cool. I'll zoom in a little more. Cool. And now this is where it gets really fun. I have a second voltage source. We're going to connect that to the motor. And now it is spinning. You can tell because I put it on crooked. <laughs> and if I zoom out just a touch, hopefully we'll see a pretty consistent set of encoder pulses. No, it's not very consistent. That's much more consistent. I think I need to put it closer to the receiver side than the uh, transmitter side. Seems to go better. There we go. Look at that, that's a pretty good signal. We are reading 43 hertz divided by six, 7.16 RPM. Is that believable? That seems a little slow. I guess it is revolutions. No, it's revolutions per second. Aha. <laughs> Aha. That's 430 revolutions per minute. Now that is easier to believe. Okay, I've turned this down to visible pulses. I can actually see the indicator LED flashing. You may be able to discern that as well. And it looks like we have 25 hertz, which 25 times 60 divided by six, so that's 250 RPM. There's only one thing to do, let's crank this up. 1300 RPM. Looks like the edges are still pretty good. Why are you not triggering very well? That is a much better trigger. Yeah, the speed does seem to be changing quite a lot. Guessing that has something to do with the wobble. Hopefully our next disc works a little better. Ooh, this one looks 
a lot better. This one looks a lot better. Look at that consistency, the thinner slots, the less wobble. That's great. With 1.1 volts attached, looks like we are getting 456 RPM. Now let's crank up the speed. Let's see if those thin slots start to cause some issues. It's even better when I get it closer to the receiver. Okay, we're up at six volts, and how many RPM is that? 3,000 RPM. Pretty good for this little encoder. Now, I, I'm not necessarily suggesting that we use these cheap pancake motors for you know, all kinds of crazy applications, like this is never going to be a great motor. But if this was just a generic cheap motor and someone were to add a, a gear train on the output where you can actually start to get some torque, like this thing has next to no torque. Well, yeah, not very much torque at all. It's made to spin fast and not provide a lot of torque. This is not going to be a very useful motor, but some of the motors coming up in the future will be very useful motors. And so this will be a great example um, for some of our setups as we're going through and picking motors and whatnot. Uh, if you can think of any standard motors that you've used in the past that are just crazy, crazy cheap, but actually reasonably useful, uh, let me know down in the comments uh, some part numbers or links, and, and I'll definitely check those out. But as far as proof of concept goes, for buying the cheapest optical gate that a person can, 3D printing a little encoder wheel, that is pretty cool. Uh, for those watching along at home, uh, these discs that I printed, and I'll probably toss some links up there. Uh, they're really nothing special. They're 30 millimeters in diameter, and the slots are uh, supposed to be 2 millimeters, but came out uh, 1.6 millimeters wide for the high resolution. Uh, 3.6 millimeters was supposed to be 4 for the, the wider window. Yeah, I am very, very excited to see where this goes. Unfortunately, some of the motors, uh, they're still in shipping. They haven't been received, but for our closed loop control experiments where we actually try to give this thing speed control, like, for example, really, really slow speeds, which it's not made for, but we'll be PWM controlling the simple DC motor, get it mounted to a protoboard somehow, and it should be really fun. If you want to see that, make sure that you hit that like button, get subscribed. I want to give a special thank you to our Patreon members. You make great projects like this one possible. And I, uh, yeah, <laughs> lost my train of thought. At any rate, I really appreciate those who support the channel in any means, whether it be through being a member, whether it be subscribing, sharing what we do with others, or simply watching. Uh, it really is awesome to see this community grow, and that can't happen without you. But most of all, I hope that you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching it, you for everyone, and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.